<laughs> it's holding pressure. Let's try something out that looks like it shouldn't work. What we have here is a beer gas cylinder. This is nitrogen and carbon dioxide, 25, 75 mix. This is a dedicated regulator for nitrogen. And you could use it also on argon. It has the same um, interface. So let's, let's disconnect. And this has been in operation now for, oh geez, I don't know couple months. So this has, th there's an O-ring and this part screws into the tank and pulls this um, surface into the inside of the tank. The inside of the tank, I don't know if you'll be able to see much. Looks, looks sort of like, looks a lot like that. So, if we can, if we can make that out, there is something that matches this shape down here inside the tank. So, what's the problem? Why, what's, why, why are we here? So this regulator works magnificently, but it's about $120, which by the way, you can purchase at imadebeer.com or you could stop into the shop in Terre Haute, Indiana and come pick one up. They're right over there on the shelf. So nitro dedicated nitrogen regulator. Well, maybe you're trying to save some bucks and perhaps you have a CO2 regulator just lying around. So, they don't work. This is a different, uh, this is a different doohickey. And they don't, uh, they don't work together. However, the Comos regulators state on their website and in the owner's manual that this regulator can be used with CO2 and with nitrogen and argon and beer gas. So how do we do that? This. So this is a nitrogen and argon adapter for the Comos regulators. Now, I don't know why, maybe you do. I don't know why a Comos regulator can work with carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and argon, and other regulators cannot. So if you know why some regulators can, some regulators can't, we would all love to know. So put, uh, put a comment down below and let us know why Comos is one of the very few that can, can do all three. So what does this thing look like? Looks like this. So this screws into here where the carbon dioxide would normally go. And then this screws into here and attaches. And it goes like that. So, but here's my concern. There's no O-ring. On this. So how does this seal? And so let's let's find out because it seems like the gas should just slip right past this. And normally, like on a CO2 regulator, we don't use thread tape on those. So by the way, and we've talked about this in the past, don't use thread tape on your CO2. This O-ring right here is the business end. This is what seals not the threads. This O-ring is what seals, not the threads. I don't know. Do we need, do we need uh, thread tape? We don't need it here, why? Why don't we need thread tape here? Because we have that gasket. 
we have that uh, gasket right there. But in the absence of the O-ring, I don't know. So let's try it. And if it leaks, then we will go to plan the second and try a little thread tape. But let's try our O natural. So we're gonna put this guy, we'll attach this first. So we're gonna put this guy in here and then give it, we'll give it a pretty good squeeze. And then put this guy on here. And then we're going to, again, give her a little bit of a punch. Okay, so, all right. Let's hope none of this blows up. Okay. All right. So I've turned the tank on and I've turned the tank off. So there's no gas being being injected into this system. And look what's going on on the high pressure side. I don't even need to spray this down to see that we're leaking somewhere. But, so let's give this guy a little, yeah. So look what's happening. And that's on there pretty tight. So let's do this. Let's. So the tank is off. Let's put a little, uh, let's put a little thread tape on here. Let's see if that We'll fix our wagon. Now I'm not gonna do a lot. I just did two turns and Give her a little bit of a squeeze. Get this over here where you can see the gauges. And... Gas. All right. I can hear it leaking. All right. Yep, she's still bubbling through. We put about four turns of thread tape on there. Now, typically what happens, and this is the reason you don't want to put thread tape on CO2, because the threads don't seal. It's the washer, it's that, it's the washer in there that actually makes the seal. And if you gum the threads up with tape, then you can't easily make a great connection with that washer. So in the absence of this sealing surface, this O-ring, you know, but I'm worried that the tape is going to actually make it to where we cannot get a good seal. So let's tighten her up. Let's see. I must have, I must have kicked the uh, regulator loose. Okay. 
Okay, so regulators tighten back up. All right. No, kind of steady. So, I don't see any bubbles. Okay. The high pressure, there you go. The high pressure regulator holding steady. I don't see any bubbles on the on this side, over here. Yeah. So there you go. If you have a Comos regulator sitting around, you can go to imadebeer.com or fybs.us. You can pick up a Comos adapter that screws in to your Comos regulator and you can push nitrogen beers or argon. Why do you use argon? You use argon to push wine. You use uh, nitrogen and nitrogen carbon dioxide mix for beers like Smidix, um, Guinness, uh, things like that. So the nitro beers. So yeah, that gives you a little bit more versatility, save you a little bit of money. So there you go. Comos and it's little adapter doodad and some thread tape and you've got yourself a setup for for beer gas or a wine setup for argon <laughs> <laughs>